This video is sponsored by Incogni. Hi everyone, it's Justin. In my last vlog, we tackled the issue with the roof in my house. It rained inside. Casually. <laughs> the next question was the situation with the architect. This renovation is a huge project for which I hired an architecture agency. It's not going well. Um, the first plan that they drew was not exactly matching what I said I wanted, but I was hopeful. Actually, let me show you the plan. The outside, you already know this part of the terrace, which is covered by your roof, but nothing really happens in there because mosquitoes, too hot in summer, too cold in winter, this space doesn't have a use. It is to become the main bathroom of the house because natural light here, well, imagine, imagine that this will close with the door, of course. Um, space, like a bathroom worthy of the size and the history of this house. In this hole here, we make a hole and a door goes into a corridor there so that we can reach this space without having to be outside. Now, if I go inside again, um, we have this space here that is currently a guest bed, but that will change. It's a small space, which doesn't really have a use either. So, entering what is currently the bathroom, the corridor, so the door, will land right here. This will become a corridor. This wall will move a little bit further to the left, so this space will become a little bit smaller, to have space here for the corridor. In that corner, instead of the bathroom, we will have a laundry room, utility room, plus the space for the water boiler and the technical equipment. This here will become a guest restroom. And then from here, another wall will be pierced and another door at the end of the corridor leading into the next room. But then, while iterating and refining the overall house plan, I noticed that my feedback was not being implemented. I could see technical mistakes, and you know, I'm no architect. If I can see mistakes just based on common sense, what about the mistakes that I'm not noticing? I guess it has to do with being an entrepreneur as well. When I'm dealing with a field that I know nothing about, you know, I will do my research, I will figure things out, I will have questions. It's not like, I need to understand exactly in details how they do things or why. I want to be able to ask a question like, we have this issue, what are the options and which one do you recommend? And then I expect them to say, we have option A, B and C, we recommend B and here is why. You know, and then I'm totally fine with that. I'm not trying to challenge their expertise and in theory, I trust them. The problem is when I ask a question and they don't have an answer. You know, like they are blanking out and I'm like, they haven't thought it through. Right now in the planning phase, it's easy to, you know, it's just a drawing. It's easy to change things, no problem. But what about once we're in the execution phase, we have already teared down this wall here and we find that there is no way we can get the pipes from here to there. Or like, I don't know, like, oh, and the, and the wall is already gone. <laughs> what do we do then? You know what I mean? And then. Over time, I didn't have a good feeling at all anymore with them. So in January, I asked the agency to switch the person in charge of my renovation. And they promised, swore, guaranteed that I would get somebody who is a lot more experienced with renovations. Because, you know, renovating a house versus building a new one, these are completely different sports, different leagues. I get that. So we got a new person, but it's not better. That new person is not owning, leading the project. It's like passive, slow, no challenge, no input, no suggestions. I feel like I have to push and pull all the time for anything to happen. The entire agency, I think, is missing like leadership and direction. I mean, for instance, the new person, she's sending me cost estimates from craftspeople a month later than what we agreed on and that she promised. And it's not what we need. I don't know where the problem is, but the, the communication process is not working. Right now, I kind of feel like it would be better and also more time and cost efficient 
for me to speak to the craftspeople myself without her as an intermediary and also without paying her to do that. But I'm well aware that I'm not an architect, so I'm not the right person for the job. I'm not qualified. I would make mistakes and notice them too late. So what are my alternatives? Option one is I fire this agency. I hire a new one, which I have to look for. I have them go back to the drawing board, check what has been done so far and start again from there, which sets me back by several months in the process. Option two, I find one person, a freelance architect, who works alone in an agile manner, fast and smart, you know, how I like it, <laughs> with a good network of craftspeople in my region. How to find that unicorn? P question for later. Option three. Do I have an option three? If you're watching this and you have any experience with renovating a house in France, I would love your opinion. How do I get unstuck here? Is it unrealistic of me to expect advice and anticipation from an architect? Did I set the bar too high? Or did I hire the wrong agency? That's the question. But since we're here, <laughs> let me show you the room where the corridor ends, because you don't know that one yet. This is the room that will become the main bedroom, the master's bedroom. The corridor will end right here. So we're opening that wall as well. And then you're inside an amazing room, which needs better lighting for sure. These doors, the architect wanted to change them. I said, hell no, <laughs> a door like this. And then the shutter is inside and it looks fabulous. Look at that. It's at least a hundred years old and it's staying for sure. The floor looks amazing and I want to keep it. They also wanted to cover it and destroy these tiles. I said, nope, 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 nope. This is part of the soul of the house. This closet is a, is a closet in the wall. The doors look fantastic. These shelves here are temporary from the previous owners, but I'm going to change them. And actually in that little hall with the white background, it was a door that led to the neighbor's house. Go figure why. <laughs> so it's the thinnest part of the wall, but I want to keep that a shelf. Okay, now I'm turning around. This chimney is amazing and it's working. Always wanted a chimney in my bedroom. <laughs> no, I didn't. This mantelpiece is very, very old. It's in fantastic shape and it's so staying here. I will though change this because this is ugly and this chimney here is not legal anymore. If you renovate a house now you have to change it because it's not energy efficient so they will eventually disappear from the landscape. And here you're seeing the window so the bottom wood paneling does not open but you see the shutters at the top and the window behind it. And Ceilings à la française everywhere. This is not moving. <laughs> Count on me. Now I'm standing in the corner so that you can see more of the room. It is massive. It needs to be furnished, of course, and the bed will change, but nothing will move before the renovation because I want to see the final space before I start imagining the furniture in it, if that makes sense. But it is a very big master bedroom that will be super comfy in winter as well until that glorious day. I want to, you know, keep moving and keep doing things in the house because just waiting like this is not my thing. I need to keep busy. So I've been collecting over the past few months, wooden furniture pieces, things that I found in flea markets and whatnot. So I've been taking care of these. Some of the pieces have worms in them, so they really needed attention actually. So first I made the wood powder fall out of the little holes to kind of see where are active worms or where are the holes, just old ones that are not active anymore. Then I vacuum cleaned everything so that I could see even better where are active worms because if I take out all the powder and then I see powder appearing again, then I will know there is a worm right in this hole. It's a little bit tedious. <laughs> it took a hot minute, but it's very satisfying at the same time. Then I brought everything outside, painted all the surfaces with an anti-worm product. That also makes the wood harder. So future worms won't like the taste of it, sort of, and they won't want to move in. 
And then, you know, you let dry, you repeat the process several times. It's a three day project at least, and you have to leave everything outside so it can breathe. Also in the category organizing things, my laptop died. I guess it was just too much video footage uploading and processing during the night. I got a new one, but I also took that as an opportunity to clean my desktop entirely, unload all the files that I was not using and put them onto an external hard drive out of my sight, kind of clean deck. I also unsubscribe from newsletters that I'm not reading because daily, who has time for that? <laughs> it feels really good. It's like spring clean, highly recommend it. Now, I want to tell you about my sponsor for this video, Incogni. First, the why. A few weeks ago, I started to get advertising emails, physical posts and SMS from companies I never gave my contact info to. I know that leaks happen, <laughs> Facebook, but it's the first time for me and I like my personal info private. I don't know about you. For example, data related to your health could leak and then suddenly you might see your health insurance costs increase exponentially. So I asked you for your advice and several of you recommended I try Incogni to solve that issue. Incogni, reach out to the brokers that sell your data on your behalf and request them to erase everything. And then they repeat the process so that your data stays off the market. I created my account, turns out 35 brokers had data about me and now they're raising it. If you're thinking you need this service too, the first 100 people who click on the link in the video description will get Incogni at 60% off. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this vlog. Renovating a house really is ups and downs. I'm learning. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you've watched until here so that I see you in the new one real soon. Take care. Bye.